Hey everybody, Dr. A here, and in this video, we're going to be exploring another example of deriving shear and moment functions. So let's go ahead and get started. In our given information, we're being asked to write the shear and moment functions for the beam. Now, if you notice, this is a simply supported beam with an external hinge at A and a roller at B. And the applied load is a linearly decreasing load. So it's a triangular load over the entire 12 foot span. At point A, the magnitude of the triangularly distributed load is 50 PLF, and then it, it linearly decreases down to zero at point B. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we need to do to start our solution is to solve for at least some of the external support reactions. Now, you don't necessarily need all of them, but we definitely need the external support reactions at A because our origin is at point A, and our x variable, our x location variable, is coming off of A pointing to the right. So I'm gonna draw a free body diagram of the system, and that is gonna look just like this. And we're gonna have our linearly varying load, or our triangular load here, has the high point of 50 pounds per linear foot, and the reactions are gonna be an AY, and then you can clearly see that AX is zero. So there's an AX there, but since there's no applied loads in the X direction, AX is zero. And then we're gonna have a BY here. And of course, the entire length is 12 feet. Now, we only need AY. Now, just to make it make a point here, we can get AY and BY, but we're only going to utilize AY in our method of sections operations because our origin is at point A. So I'm only going to solve for AY since that's all I need for what I'm really trying to do, which is to get the shear and moment functions. So I'm going to say sum of the moments about point B equals zero, counterclockwise positive, and I'm going to say negative AY times 12 feet and then I'm gonna say plus one half times 50 PLF times 12 feet times two thirds of 12 feet, and that's gonna equal zero. And I'm gonna do some rearranging and I'm gonna solve for AY as 200 pounds reacting upwards. Now, I'm just going to make a couple comments here in case we're a little rusty on our triangular uh, load distributions. So um, in this calculation here, the one half times 50 PLF times 12 is my equivalent force due to the triangular load distribution. And that's going to be located right here, F equiv. Okay, and that's just the area of the load distribution. One half times the height of the load distribution times the length over which it's distributed. Now the two thirds times 12 feet, if you remember from your knowledge of statics, that's gonna be our moment arm from the equivalent load to point B. So that's two thirds of 12 feet there, okay? So that's just a little review of some statics operations. I'll make a little note here. This is our moment arm or our perpendicular distance to point B. Okay, moving on. Now that we have a Y, we're about ready to start our method of sections process, okay? So we're gonna say use method of sections, MOS is my abbreviation for method of sections, to compute the internal shear function as a function of x and m, the internal moment function, as a function of x. So this is function notation. It's v as a function of x and m as a function of x. It is not v times x and it is not m times x. It's, these are functions here, okay? Now, in order for us to do that, we need to first do something very important. We need to determine the slope of this load distribution, okay? Now notice this is a linearly decreasing load. It's shaped like a triangle. So I'm gonna say the slope of the load distribution is equal to simply rise over run, okay? So that's gonna equal 50 PLF over 12 feet. And that's gonna give us a value of 4.1667 P 
PLF per foot. Now I know those are kind of weird units, but what that means is that every foot we move across this beam, the load intensity is going to decrease by 4.1667 PLF, okay? So again, that's a slope of 4.1667 PLF per foot, and it's a decreasing sense. So we can put a little note here, and we can say this is a decreasing, decreasing slope, all right? So that's our slope of the load distribution. Now what we need to do is write the load function, okay? So I'm gonna write W as a function of X. And again, this is function notation. It is not W times X, it's W as a function of X. And again, it's gonna be a linear function. So notice that this is a linear, um, a linear distribution. So that's gonna be simply 50 PLF minus 4.1667 PLF per foot times x. So if you notice, this is just a linear function. It has the form y equals mx plus b. And we can make a note of that by saying that this right here is the slope, x is the independent variable, and 50 PLF, PLF is the intercept, okay? It's what we would call, you know, in math, the, the uh, uh, y intercept. Okay. So this is the equation. This is the equation of this load distribution. All right. So now that we have the equation of this line right here, now we're ready to use our method of sections operations. All right. So let's go ahead and do that. By method of sections, I'm going to make a cut at a distance x away from my origin, all right? And we know that at my origin at A, I had a reaction of 200 pounds that we calculated earlier. If you remember, my positive X coordinate is pointing to the right. Now, what is what else is gonna show up on this free body diagram using method of sections? Well, a piece of that load distribution is gonna show up just like this, okay? And here's my 50 PLF. Now, remember, the zero is not showing up here. Notice I'm not drawing this going down to zero because this X value is not at specifically 12 feet. In this case, X, the domain of X is gonna be between zero and 12 feet. So remember, this is method of sections. We're making a cut at an arbitrary distance X. And when we make that cut, a couple of things are gonna be visible. The first is gonna be our internal shear as a function of X and our internal bending moment as a function of X, okay? Now here's my question for you to think about and maybe pause the video after I ask it. What is this value here? What is, oh, let's change colors. What is this value right here? Is it zero, is it 50, is it 25 PLF, what is it? Well, pause the video if you want to think about it, because I'm about to tell you that value is W, okay? And specifically, it's W as a function of X. So it's this function that we just wrote. So that means that when we make this cut at a distance X, what shows up in terms of the load intensity at that cut is W as a function of X. Remember, we're making a cut um, at an arbitrary distance X. Okay, so now looking at this free body diagram, which is coming from our method of sections, we're ready to uh, develop shear as a function of X and M as a function of X. So uh, to get the shear as a function of X, I'm gonna say sum of the forces in the Y direction equals zero. And I take things pointing up as positive. So looking at this free body diagram, I've got 200 pounds. And then what I can do is I can separate this, this uh, trapezoidal shaped load into a rectangle that's easy to deal with and a triangle that's also easy to deal with. Let's look at the rectangle first, okay? The rectangle, uh, rectangular portion is gonna give us minus W 
times x, okay? So this is w times x. Or if you wanna sneak in a little extra x here, it would be w is a function of x times this horizontal distance x, and the negative is because it's pointing down. Now let's talk about the triangular portion. Let's talk about how we're gonna handle this little triangular part. We're gonna say minus 1 half times 50 PLF minus W times X. So that's gonna give us the area of this little triangular part. Now, why 50 minus W? Well, remember, this distance right here is W, and so what you need is this little distance right here. This little distance, which is the height of just the triangular part, is 50 PLF minus W. So then we say one half base times height, which is the area of a triangle, and that gives us this term, and the negative is still because all of this distributed loading is pointing downwards. Now finally, we're gonna have minus V as a function of X equals zero. So that's minus this V as a function of X. Please be careful with your function notation versus multiplication, okay? So we're gonna do a little bit of rearranging and we can write V as a function of X is gonna equal minus W times X minus one half 50 minus W times X. And then we can write um, plus 200 pounds, okay? Now we can substitute in this function for W as a function of X in for the W's that have shown up in this equation. So I'm gonna write this as V equals minus, open parentheses, 50 minus 4.1667x times x minus one half, open a parentheses, 50 minus, open another parentheses, 50 minus 4.1667x, close a parentheses, and then close a parentheses again, times x, and then plus, 200. Okay, so um, this is all of it pieced together and we can start seeing that um, there's going to be some things that get canceled out along the way. So we can clearly see that this 50 minus this 50 cancels out and we're going to distribute several factors. So at this point, it's just going to be um, a little bit of algebra rearranging, but you should end up with a shear function after you do some algebra rearranging of V equals 2.0833x squared minus 50x plus 200. And collectively, this function is going to carry units of pounds. So this is our shear function, okay? And that's part of our answer. The next part of our answer is going to be the moment as a function of x. So in order to do that, we're going to say some of the moments about the cut equals zero counterclockwise is positive. And I'm going to keep referring back to this free body diagram. So maybe go ahead and make sure you have this free body diagram sketched in your own notes. Uh, for your own reference, so I can write this clearly here. So um, when I sum moments about the cut, I'm gonna uh, first handle that uh, AY reaction. That's gonna give me minus 200 times X, um, and that minus is due to that causing a clockwise tendency of rotation about the cut. And then I'm gonna have a counterclockwise tendency of rotation from the rectangular load. So that's gonna say, give me plus W, times x times x over 2 and then i've got the triangular portion of the load which is going to give me a counterclockwise tendency of rotation so that's a positive sign there and that's going to be plus one half 50 minus w times x times two-thirds of x that two-thirds of x is a moment arm and then i'm going to say plus m equals zero. So again, maybe pause the video and refer back to that free body diagram so you can visualize how this equation uh, is coming together. I'm going to do some rearranging here and I'm going to get m equals negative wx squared over 2 minus 1 half 
50 minus W times two thirds of X squared plus 200 X. Okay, all I did was I did some algebra rearranging there. Next, I'm going to I'll make a note here, substitute, sub in the function for W. So at this step, we're gonna substitute in our W function in here, just like we did with the shear function. So remember, W is 50 minus 4.167 X. So we substitute that in and we can simplify. So I'm gonna skip some algebra steps here, but I encourage you to take it upon yourself to do the algebra and make sure you get the following final function. M as a function of X should end up being 0.6943 X cubed minus 25 X squared plus 200 X. And that's gonna be our final moment function. Again, maybe pause the video, do your own algebra at this step here and make sure it all collapses down to this final moment function. It is a, maybe two or three algebra steps to get to this final form, but it's just rearranging some constants and some, some uh, variable terms and you should get to that final form. If you found this example helpful, please hit like and subscribe and be on the lookout for more videos like this one. Thanks for watching.